this premium auto body shop in northeastern Philadelphia, a team of expert restoration technicians have accepted one of the most difficult jobs they may ever face. No supports on this body at all. A one-of-a-kind car from the 60s, created from the builder's imagination. It's at the back end of a station wagon. Incredibly, they only have a few rare photographs to guide this massive rebuild. The crew enters a time warp, searching for a myriad of unique parts to restore a customized 54 Oldsmobile to show car quality. They don't have any. Racing to enter a major car competition, the crew discovers that the deeper they get into this hot rod, the more it becomes a nightmare. I can't do it all night or I'll probably drop over dead. Alan Lewenthal is the go-to guy when it comes to rare classic motor cars. Finding these rare cars and being able to bring them back to life, that's a goal I've always had, and now I can live it. Scouring backyards and barns across the USA, Alan picks up derelict collectibles he can transform from oldies into goodies in his Philly body shop. This is where the fun begins. Many of Mark Hiotto's restorations end up in auction where they sell for big dollars. It can be lucrative, but it's also risky. A profit is never guaranteed. Today, Alan travels to Fort Worth, Texas, where he's about to pick up an online acquisition. The House of Hot Rods has an awesome collection of radically modified custom cars. General Manager John Painter is expecting him. Hey, John. Hey, Alan, how, how you are doing? you Welcome to the House of Hot Rods. Thank you. Let me show you around a little bit. So what is this place? This is the toy box. Wow. John's toy box is stuffed with custom cars. They began as factory models, which were modified by adding elements from other car manufacturers and periods of time to create a customized automobile. Well, today we're here to see a very special custom. So where is it? She's right outside. There she is. Oh, my. <laughs> I feel like I'm walking through time. Pictures don't do this car justice. All Alan had seen were photographs of what was advertised online as a 1954 Oldsmobile custom car. But what he's bought is a beat-up beast of a vehicle an Olds 88 that was transformed in the 60s into a pickup truck. This restoration will take Alan and his team on a psychedelic journey back through time to the golden age of custom cars. We just gotta chill. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable how they built this. Wow, there's so many pieces on this that are just, you know, hard to decipher because it's such a high, high-end custom car. This was someone's dream car, there's no doubt. Right. This is kind of shocking, how they, how they formed all this out. Restoring unorthodox bodywork and decoding this throwback's pedigree will need lots of detective work, the kind of auto archaeology research Alan and his crew thrive on. Supposedly, the story was he built it for his wife as a dream car, right. as a very, very high competition vehicle. And when a car's customized to this level, you never know what happens to, to anything, you know? <laughs> we love the fact that it's been untouched. And it's really important to us as historians to keep it the way it was. Like this. You know how hard that is to do. Yeah. I mean, that's true styling of the, of the 50s and 60s. Long neglected, the interior is a disaster. To restore it, Alan must create unique features like the pleated upholstery and hand-built sitter console. Back in the day, these features helped make this custom a prize-winning show car. I'm loving it. I mean, and let me tell you, I've seen some real wrecks in my time and really bad cars. This is just phenomenal. Amazed by its generally dilapidated condition, Alan shifts his focus to the details. Let's go around the other side and check the exhaust coming off the engine. The exhaust is a key feature where the photos in this custom car don't match. A unique straight stack exhaust isn't visible today. And where does it end up? Well, it sure doesn't end up here. Digging a little deeper, <laughs> Alan deciphers the multiple exhausts and makes a connection with his new find. Went under the floor, it came up through here, and this was their exhaust. OK? 
because there was no exhaust out the back of the car. How exciting would that be to start this thing up with a straight stack? Whoa, right from a Rocket 88, that would be great. The online photographs don't do justice to another major feature, the custom truck bed. That's original too. That is so cool. It had black fur, like a carpet. The original 1954 Oldsmobile Super 88 Holiday Coupe was customized into a pickup truck in the 60s. Later, a major makeover in the 70s eliminated exhaust stacks and replaced the front and rear bumpers. Allen's plan is to return his new find to the first version, the prize-winning custom car built in the early 60s. I can't wait to get this on the truck, get it back to uh, the shop. It's got a long trek ahead of it. It's, it's got to go from uh, down in Texas all the way to Philadelphia. Yeah, I can't wait to see its completion. Well, we'll keep in touch, and you know, any questions we have, we'll definitely call you guys for everything. Give me a shout. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Alan's just bought a unique piece of automotive history. In the nifty 50s, America, flush with post-war prosperity, not only allowed teenagers to own their own cars, but to customize them into hot rods as a personal expression of newfound freedom. Manufacturers nurture the new craze with their own futuristic custom cars. GM's Olds 88 series became a top seller. In the early 60s, one of those sleek 88s was transformed into a radical custom by an imaginative backyard builder. Now it's time to bring the vehicle back to its Philly body shop. Allen plans to restore the vehicle to show car quality. Then he'll take it to the World of Wheels in Chicago, where the custom won prizes around the area in 1963. If all goes to plan, Allen's restoration will be a prize winner again and become his shop's calling card at car shows across America. He's got 12 weeks to complete the transformation and fulfill his vision. Finished product is going to be a fantastic show car, a one-off custom car that no one will ever doubt. They're gonna know this is Marquee Auto Restoration's work and our dream brought back to life. Back at the Philly Body Shop, Alan is about to blow away his crew. You guys ready? I always bring the cars in and let everyone take time to look at the car. Of course, the younger guys right away, you know, this is a beast, this is an ugly piece of junk, and so on and so forth. Oh my God. Wow. The older guys look at that car, and they see the styling efforts, and they relive custom cars and hot rods and show cars. They believed in it, and now I believe in it. And I saw it in Texas. This could be a wonderful vehicle. The youngsters might not have first-hand experience, but this retro hot rod's got their imaginations running wild. I can tell you one thing I don't like. The motor is way too tiny. There's plenty of room in there. There should be a bigger motor in there. Well, that'd be cool. Flamethrowers, too. This would have been a nice car back in the day. Is that bearskin? Black bearskin? Yeah, what is that? It's at the back end of a station wagon. They used everything they could from a woolly mammoth to make this car. <laughs> it's fun now, but the veterans recognize the challenges. And things that might cause us problems are, one, the windshield. We've got to cut a windshield. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing we've got to focus in on. This car is plastic. It'll be un interesting to unwrap this car and see how they did it back in the day. That's, that's amazing. It's, it's gonna be so interesting. Although he's a classic car aficionado, Allen's turned this project over to his shop manager, Jim Klotz, who has bona fide hot rod credentials. He lived that period in his life, and he knows hot rodding, and he knows customizing. This rebuild is a complex puzzle. To modify the 54 Oldsmobile, the customizer was free to use any parts and materials to create his vision. Trim pieces, the grill and headlights could be elements from any available automobile prior to the customization in the early 60s. Online photos will help identify some custom parts, but they could be 50 years old, rare, and hard to find. The team's going to need a lot more information to accurately rebuild this hot rod. Guess what I got in the mail? Yeah. Oh, look at that. The only copy available that I could find anywhere in the entire country. It's an amazing find. Pictures of the custom when it was a show car called Joanne's Dream. What a great find to oh, find yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a magazine that has the photo the of the car. Mm -hmm. 
The next morning, things start to look up when the original engine comes back to life. All right, what do you think? I think uh, we have to diagnose the engine a little more than we've done. Sounded great. Working engine, one less part to buy. Meanwhile, Allen's tracked down an amateur photographer named Jerry Ike from a lead he found in his 60s custom car magazine. Hello? Jerry? Yes? Hi, this is Allen at Marquee Auto Restorations in Philadelphia. Hi there. How are you? Uh, good. Drawn by a deep connection, Jerry Ike has been photographing cars for decades. All my life, there's, there's, there's something fascinating about a car when I was a little kid. Just the fascination between cars and uh, looking at them, photographing them, owning them. It's just a rolling sculpture, just like work of art. That's all it is, it's a work of art on wheels. In 1963, Jerry captured Allen's custom car in its prime. Now his photographs will guide the restoration. What color was it? Uh, orchid color. Wow. Hey, uh, Jer Jerry, I got a question for you. Okay. Down the sides of the car, we see that there's aluminum trim with an insert in another color. That's a 59 Plymouth uh, side trim. Oh, thank nice. you, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Because we don't, we don't have the trim. Here's the thing, Jerry. We're, we will keep in touch with you over the next few weeks. We love... Once we get your photos, which is going to be so exciting, we're going to call you back, and then we can talk about it again. All right. Thank you. Stay well. All right. All right thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, we'll see you. Unfortunately, photos won't overhaul the neglected engine or buy parts. It'll take money and lots of it. When I purchased the dream car, I thought I was going to have to spend probably fifteen dollars or $20,000 for the raw car, just from knowing what I knew going into it. And we were very fortunate to buy it for much less. So we save money on the front end, but looking at the car and the bodywork and all the other issues that I saw from photos, I knew this was going to be an expensive project. Where we'll be when we're done? I don't know. 75000 100000 I won't know until it's completed, but it's going to be an expensive restoration. Many, many hours and a lot of rare parts are going to make this a very special car. Yes, this is Jim from Marquee Auto Restoration. I'm um, looking for 59 Plymouth Belvedere side trim. The search for rare parts is running into a dead end. How uh, about a 55 DeSoto grill? Okay, thank you. Thanks to photographer Jerry Ike, the team knows what parts to look for. But the Chicago car show is getting closer. They'll have to make parts or make do with what they can find. More excavation work reveals the bill will continue to climb. Upon closer inspection, the dream car's body is in worse shape than anybody expected. A little worse than what we thought initially. The body mount that actually secures the body to the frame is totally gone. Nobody's sure if we can get parts for it or not yet, so we might have to end up remanufacturing all these body mounts and this whole rocker on the inside. Yeah, the body's literally just laying on the frame. No supports on this body at all. When we come back, the team uncovers a customizer's secret and solves a nagging mystery. Where's the hole? Restoration wizard Alan Lewenthal has bought a 1960s custom car in an online auction. His team has just 12 weeks to completely rebuild it in time for an auto show in Chicago. Turns out, the car body is more rotted than expected, and the customizations are so unique that they're a challenging puzzle for the crew. Luckily, Alan found photographer Jerry Ike, who identified some mystery parts. Oh, thank yes. you, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Later, Jerry's real treasures arrive, his photographs. Don't run away. <laughs> what did it say? What's the matter? Oh, what? Let me What's see what you matter? got. I know what day it is. Oh, I have something in here for you. Mm. Ready? Yeah, I hope so. Oh, yes. Jerry's photos are the Rosetta Stone for decoding the customized 54 Oldsmobile. They extended this. This should stop right here. No, look yes. at the shape of this. See how it drops down? Right. In between here? It should be down like this. Uh, I think you're going to find that's all in there. 
I, I think you're gonna find it's in here. It's in just underneath that stuff. Like I said, we have to unwrap it and see what we got. This is what auto archaeology is all about. See, I don't think so. I don't think so. Look at look at the distance between mm. here and yeah. there. And what's all this? That's that's the old bumper. This is a newer, this is a 55 or 56 front end welded to it. What they did was they welded this all in front of what already was there. All right, so we gotta take that apart and check that wow, out. Wow, that's why we have to blast it off to see where we're at and what we're doing. Blasting the body with baking soda under high pressure reveals more of the customizer's secrets hidden under layers of paint and body filler the experts call mud. Looks like the car was blue, then purple, and then this other paint job. I don't know how talented this guy was, but he was a man of means, and he needed that top to shrink, and he did it. You know, I guess he figured that he could always add mud as opposed to making it right the way it, the way it should have been, you know? This guy didn't have any equipment. He had the basics, a torch and a big hammer, it looks like. To accommodate a truck bed, the original Oldsmobile's roof was customized in two stages. A series of pie-shaped pieces were cut out in a process called sectioning. The resulting gaps were then hammered together and the seams welded. The excess metal was cut away. The windshield posts were chopped or shortened to create a new opening. Sectioning and chopping produced a shorter and narrower roof for the customized passenger compartment. <laughs> Along with structural surprises, the dream car is full of lead used to cover welding seams. Radical customizing meant lots of lead. Back in the day, a customized car like this was called a lead sled. Uncovering the original 63 Custom Hot Rod requires getting through the lead and dismantling the parts on the vehicle from the second generation 70s customization. What I did was just took the wizard wheel and cut right along the top of the weld all the way across. When I got to here, I couldn't really figure out how they attached it to the fender. And now here you can actually see, once I bust it and cut all the metal away, the chrome bumper underneath. And all they did was took the fender down, beat it to the bumper, welded it straight to the chrome bumper, and then made several patches just to kind of fill it in and flow it up to the fender. And that's what all the lead was covering, all, that, all this seam. Deciphering the car's design has been greatly aided by Jerry Ike's photos. They not only help identify the parts, there's also a glimpse of the builder. This car is a myriad of parts that are, that are all and that's what street riders do and customizers. They, they look at pieces, they say, well, that looks cool, and they incorporate it into their car. And so this guy had, or didn't, or started out with a basic idea, and it has evolved into this, this El Camino type thing. I mean, you have 57 Chrysler uh, quad headlights, uh, a DeSoto grill, and wound up at the end with a 55 old bumper in the back. Um, these were all things that we had to search out because it didn't come with our car. Our car was just a basic shell. Had we not had these pictures, we would have been doomed. Visual aids will help track down custom details. But for original components, the team needs a donor car, another 54 Oldsmobile. Without it, Alan will have to fabricate parts, meaning more time and more money. You know we need to get a donor car. So, you know, these pictures are GM documented pictures of the holiday hardtop. We need to find one. There's no way that we're gonna be able to get not only the shape of the front, but inside, dome lights, stainless steel. We need this, see that shape? That's what we really need. We need a dash. So we have to go out now and we're gonna start searching for a parts car, a donor car. I'm gonna start making some calls, search the internet again, see if we find out anything. There's hardly any of these around, it's an oddity. You find parts, but you don't find a car. While Alan searches for a 1954 Oldsmobile donor car, the crew removes all secondary customizations from the 70s. And the media blasting also uncovered a mysterious brass plate. We're gonna see if we can melt some of this brass out of here. The plate looks suspiciously like it could hide the hole for the exhaust stack. Alan admired them in the first pictures he saw of the dream car. That's the patch they welded in over the top of this. Auto archaeology is as much detective work as it is body work. Where's the hole? 
With the major excavations completed, it's time to refinish the body. The crew uses polyester filler, called mud, to cover welds and patches. We're going to start mudding. We're going to have to put it on like two or three times, so we're going to go with a cheese grater, which we shouldn't be doing, but there's no way to get through this without doing that. So cheese grate it, wire brush it, vacuum it, get your next layer on type, type of thing, build up. Finally, the custom motor car is getting its shape back. Power tools are fast, but the crew is old school. They prefer a hand scraper called a cheese grater for a top quality body sculpting. I've been doing this for 35 years, and I learned how to do body work. That's how we do body work. That's how our guys do body work. You can't get the craftsmanship out of a power tool. Um, it, when you go to shows, you can see the guys that use them, and you can tell the guys that don't. And, and that's what it is, being an artist. Unfortunately, many areas of the body are beyond repair and can only be replaced. Took the outer rocker out because the inner is all rotted out and just not structurally sound. So what we're going to try to do is cut out the inner and make a whole new inner piece to come all the way out and then come down and support the outer rocker. If we had the donor car here, it would help us a lot. Um, I don't know what the heck's going on with that. I don't know if we'll ever see it. When we come back, the search for rare parts takes an unexpected turn that could cost the team their shot at the World of Wheels car show in Chicago. Restoration of a 1963 customized Oldsmobile Super 88 is in its sixth week. There's lots of rot in the body, replacement parts have been nearly impossible to find, and there's a car show in just six weeks. After a nationwide search, Allen located a donor car in Minnesota. It not only provides parts, but also a chance for a side-by-side -side comparison with the custom. The most interesting section is back here at the roof. When he moved this roof forward, and basically what he did was he chopped this off right in here, took this piece and this roof, cut it at the front and moved everything forward until this came up to here. To create the hot rods truck bed required removing the rear seat, then moving the top forward and customizing it to fit. To compensate for the uneven surface height along the fender, the higher sections at the rear were customized into decorative air scoops to accent the new two-seater pickup. Auto archaeology aside, the donor car has the front end Alan desperately needs. My biggest concern going forward with this project is the front end. That front end is shaped a certain way from Oldsmobile. It's like a teardrop. It goes off on both sides symmetrically. On the car, from the pictures we have from Jerry, it shows the original car having that shape. When we got this car in from Texas, it was this way, not that way. Unfortunately, it turns out the donor car is not the easy solution. It's still in really rough shape. It's not that bad. I mean, if we got it stripped and then we blasted it, straightened it out, it's workable. It's just going to take some time, unfortunately, which we have very little of. So I think we need a parts car for the parts car. On closer inspection, the donor car is rusted out. The teardrop front end is useless. So the Mission Impossible assignment is to find yet another rare 1954 Oldsmobile Super 88. Oh, it. It's very cold out. And by the time we get there, it's going to be dusk. All ingredients for a recipe of disaster. So I'm excited. The hunt is on. A junkyard just outside Philadelphia might have a second 50-year-old donor car. All the crew needs are fenders to make the trip worthwhile, but the odds aren't good. Among acres and acres of wrecks, finding the right Olds 88 is certainly a case of a needle in the haystack. I'm gonna see a rockin' 88. Priority was a fender. We need a fender section to help us patch rather than have to spend all those hours making that other one because there's a lot of time in that. With the fender search ongoing, the crew is moving forward on the interior. The custom upholstery on the door panels needs to be recreated from scratch. I'm going to try to make a pattern from this paper for the new door panel. 
There's nothing much left of the original. To create new custom panels, the tissue paper pattern is transferred to firm cardboard that will support the upholstery. Not as easy a task as it sounds. The holes on this panel appear to be different than the holes on the door, because we're not getting a line up here. A misalignment now could mean trouble later with the hardware. Meanwhile, I think this is it, fellas. Grill opening looks the same, the fenders look the same. It's got the same front bumper brackets. It's got the same splash shield. This is it. It looks like we got a decent chunk of fender here, too. And this piece here is the piece I need. The one we got off our parts car was all rotted, and it, it was rotted all here, so this looks like it's pretty decent. It's two pieces. We got it. We did it. We're out of here. Now the exterior restoration can move forward again. But the vehicle's interior still holds some mysteries. This panel appears to be slightly different than that one. The metal piece, the top piece, is all the way back here in the photo. So we actually you have a, a chrome, let's call it a chrome seam. Right. And then you have an upholstery seam right. here. Oh, yeah. yeah. A bit of auto archaeology reveals the custom armrest is from a 1956 Chrysler. The upholstery pattern comes from one of Jerry Ike's amazing photos. This all has to be rolled and pleated up to this line here. From here on up, it's white and smooth, black and smooth, and either, I think this, we, we believe this is carpet black. The custom is coming together, but not fast enough. With the Chicago World of Wheels car show now only four weeks away, the crew is paying a heavy price in long hours. We were here last night until 11 o'clock, which meant that we didn't get home till 12.30. And I get up at 4.30, so that's three hours worth of sleep. And those days catch up to you. Working above and beyond the call of duty makes restorers a little edgy. I spent five hours Friday cleaning up the mess that my coworkers and managers have been making, and now I'm stopping again to clean up after them. Because evidently, what the process is, is they teach the younger guys to clean up after themselves all the time, but as soon as you hit, I guess, 50, you don't have to clean up after yourself anymore. Somebody else cleans up after you. Nerves are frayed, but the beat goes on. This is what Joanne's dream originally had on the front of it, which is the original front end of a 54 Oldsmobile. And when they put their other piece on, they hacked this piece up, which is the inner fender for this car. Yeah, I have to have this inner intersection done first. I'm going to pretty much just tack everything together. I mean, I'm going to use hardware to hold it into place. I'm going to tack these inner, both inner fender sides in here, weld them in there. That way, I can then start you know, piecing the front end back together the way it was. A lot of hard work may get the body done, but replacing the customized windshield is a major roadblock to finishing the makeover on time. Because this car, the roof was chopped, the stock windshield is now four inches too tall, and it's also too wide. So it has to get cut. We're going to cut the glass using uh, the sandblaster. I'm going to make a cardboard template of the windshield opening first take the cardboard, transfer it to a piece of steel, and then take the piece of steel and lay it on top of the new window. And then once I get that done, I'll clamp it down and actually sandblast the edge of the steel. And it'll end up giving us a nice fine line, which is what we need without cracking the glass. The actual cutting went well, left a rough edge. We're not sure how to grind glass. Nobody around here has ever done it. So I'm just going to try a couple things on the practice windshield first and see how it comes out. I can add one more thing onto my resume now. All I need is male modeling, and I'm, I'm complete. But this was only a test. The next windshield will be for all the marbles. I'm scared. I hope it fits. I don't know. There's only one good piece of glass. And around here, I have a bad reputation with, uh, with windshields. I've broken quite a few in my day. The team is rising to new challenges. They know working on a custom car is a rare opportunity. Patching rotted fenders on a classic like this one is more than a repair job. 
it's nice to work on this kind of stuff because it involves more of an artistic aspect to it. You're not just fixing something that was there, you know. We're creating something that, that is unique. I mean, this car, in every stage when we do something, it's coming along and it's looking different and it's getting more and more towards the goal of what we're shooting for. And it's nice that I get to work with my father and all the guys here. I mean, we're all great and we're having a good time and we're getting to build these cars that, you know, most people wish, you know, they could do. It's, it's, it's a treat, it's a real treat. A small reward helps, but the car is due in Chicago in less than two weeks there's no end in sight to the grind. Dad and I got here at 9 o'clock on Sunday, and we've been working since. We were here all night last night, burning the midnight oil. We only have 10 days to finish the car, and there's, it's like two weeks, two months, two months worth of work left to do to it. Even with the clock ticking against them, the crew's pushing for the show quality finish their restorations are famous for. The progress has been remarkable. Hey, what's up? Hi. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I saw this a few days ago, and I know this was going this way. A few uh, days ago, this thing was all over the place. And there were no parts on the front. What'd yeah, you do? We've come a long way. I mean, since our trip to the junkyard, so I got the feathers molded in, then I did all the lead to the seams and everything. Then I welded the stainless trim that is, was separate from the fenders to the actual fenders. So all of this is, is a section of, the, of a, the donor hood that we got from our parts car. These were the, the fender sections from the junkyard that we got, and then all this trim here that's now one piece was all separate and, and welded and leaded together. The whole shape is entirely different. Come this on, it's looks like the photos. Right, yeah, exa it's exactly the way it was. All your hard work is for the good. When we're in Chicago, you're standing next to this car, all the girls are gonna go crazy. Yeah, all the 60-year-old ladies. <laughs> that's just about it. Girls of my generation have never seen anything like this. When we come back, the new windshield turns into a disaster. How long does it take to get another piece of glass? If we we can't get one. We have to build with something else. And Alan thinks the unthinkable. I don't know if we're going to make it. Restoration expert Alan Lewenthal has just one week to complete the rebuild of a custom car from the early 60s. Long hours and delays might be too much for Alan's crew to overcome. Actually, actually, I'm not feeling too bad today. I hope that's not like the calm before the storm. Like I'm gonna have like a stroke or something. You know? Came to work yesterday at 7:30 and I'm still here. With time running out, Alan has put on a full court press. The coach has come off the sidelines. We're prepping the uh, wheel wells for paint. I'm a wheel well specialist. <laughs> That's what they call me. All hands are on deck. We have one week before the car needs to be in a trailer shipping to Chicago. I don't know if we're going to make it. With the custom vehicle still unpainted a week before the Chicago car show, it's crunch time for the bodywork. Could be an all-nighter again tonight, and I can't do an all-nighter. I'll probably drop over dead. The bodywork has turned into a sanding marathon with 36-hour shifts. Sleep comes whenever, wherever. Go for a ride. I'm gonna try to get some sleep because I got a long night ahead of me again, and if I don't get some sleep, I'll never make it. So I'm gonna see if I can sleep for an hour. Despite the long hours, the crew is going full throttle, but it never seems to be enough. It doesn't seem like I have enough time. We've still got the sanding to do on this. we still got the motor to put in. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. Marquis has been through a big struggle with this one. This has been a long battle over building this car the right way and making it correct. It's dedication, and they all have dedication. The exhaustive schedule is crushing the crew. The marathon bodywork has put real pressure on getting the custom painted. After an all-night masking job, the paint goes on. Guided by Jerry Ike's photographs, the final color is a candy apple orchid pink. <laughs> wow, that, that is that's real, that's really something. Who should get a sign made? If you're touching this car, you better be naked. <laughs> to achieve the fabled luster and depth, a custom candy apple paint job takes more than half a dozen coats of paint and lacquer. That's uh, right around 36 hours a week. I'm very tired. I'm exhausted. I'm, my body's ready to collapse. I'm done. But replacing the windshield still looms ahead. 
the test windshield proved sandblasting can cut the glass. However, with only one replacement windshield, cutting is a risky operation. The test glass cut easily, but it was 50 years old. This new windshield is made from modern glass. It doesn't seem to be cutting as easy as the uh, test glass did. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. What was going on wasn't good. Yeah, that's broken. Pat said that this glass was so much harder than the used one we did, the first one we did, right. which makes sense because it's probably higher grade. It's a costly mistake because it, it's not free. The first one was free. How long does it take to get another piece of glass? If we we can't get one. We have to go with something else. Now I have to either do Lexan or acrylic or something like that, and I got to try to make that happen today. Otherwise, I, I can't continue. Despite this major setback, the crew presses on. The excavated holes in the fender get new chrome pipes to restore the custom's unique stack exhaust system. But the Rocket 88 power plant the stacks connect to is causing the crew some problems. A critical test reveals the restored engine has a disastrous flaw. Looks like my intake's leaking pretty bad here. Yeah, it's bad. Horrible news at a horrible time. I hate those freaking gaskets. I really do. I hate those gaskets. The metal head gasket is a bit touchy and requires extra sealant to prevent leaks. A working engine is essential to qualify for the car show. For Chicago, we need the car to move under its own power to be judged. It needs to be started, move up, move back. And that's the requirements that they have as part of its mechanical check. We're all excited to hear it run. What's it, what's it going to sound like? It's like like hearing a baby talk for the first time. What's his voice going to be like, you know? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> hold on, hold on. For the mechanics, fire from the carburetor means the exhaust is going the wrong way. For Alan, it means something completely different. Stress, stress, and more stress. Well, now we are 26 hours away from either putting this car on a trailer or, or bagging the Chicago deal completely. A lot, there's just been a lot of things happening here. The restoration has become a desperate race. The finished car has to be on the road to Chicago in a matter of hours. Even if the body is completely reassembled, all is lost without a working engine and a windshield. Chicago show just got a little closer. <laughs> but there's one more major hurdle to go, the windshield. Alan has come to DGM Chrome Plating for a last ditch try at making a replacement. Using their high intensity electric oven, Alan hopes to mold a piece of Lexan plastic into a new windshield. No one has ever tried this before. Do you want to say like anything, like a prayer or anything before um, I close this door? No. Just, can we just keep cracking the door? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> For Alan, it's all trial and hopefully no errors. Oh, the laminated glass is already baking. It doesn't seem to be hurting the... Well, is not doing anything. It's the glass. The glass is getting messed up. Yeah. 315, 320. Ready? Oh! oh. That's incredible. The gamble has paid off. The Lexan has taken shape without melting. That's we have a clear windshield. That's awesome. But now, can they get it installed in time? It was months, then it was weeks, then it was days. Now we're down to hours, and soon it's going to be minutes. And there's going to be a big white trailer sitting outside empty. And I'm hoping we can fill it with this Oldsmobile. It'll take drag strip speed for the crew to reassemble the 54 Olds Custom before the transporter arrives but the next few hours will be the payoff. After weeks of exhausting work, the finishing touches will complete their resurrection of a one-of-a-kind personal interpretation of automotive styling, a classic 60s custom car. Chevrolet Corvette taillights accent the sleek customized quarter panels. 63 Mercury Comet taillight trim punctuates the unique exhaust stacks. Added teeth transform the 55 DeSoto grille into an eye-catching centerpiece. 59 Plymouth Belvedere side trim provides a bold slash and a candy apple feel. A creative plastic reproduction of the windshield completes the radically modified roof. 
63 Chevy Impala bucket seats underscore the near regal tone of the passenger compartment. Elegant hardwood slats and candy apple inserts define the truck bed. The central modification that transformed a 1954 Oldsmobile Coupe into a creative interpretation of style and function. With the classic custom reassembled, the team has less than 24 hours to transport it to the Chicago Car Show. But the last hurdle is under the hood. Time for a road test. With the transport trailer due in just minutes. Nice and easy. If something blows now, there's no time to fix it. It's very exciting. We're just all very, very tired. The energy level is just, you know, I'm in overdrive right now. The road test was a success. Time to go to Chicago. But it's 4 a.m. and the drive from Philly could take 14 hours. The entry deadline is 9 p.m. tonight. It's going to be close. When we come back, Allen's Custom gets a surprise reception in Chicago. Jimmy! It's taken nearly four months to strip, patch, and shape Alan Lewenthal's rundown early 60s custom back into show car condition. In the final week, the team worked around the clock. The custom hot rod had to be ready for the World of Wheels Auto Exhibition in Chicago. Now the team's about to find out if their work has resurrected an award-winning show car. In chilly January, Chicago plays host to one of the largest exhibitions of automobile technology ever assembled. To expand their business, Allen and his restoration team are here to stake a claim in the world of show cars. An important step for the shop's success, one they almost missed. I didn't think we could make it. I gave 11 o'clock Wednesday night the cutoff time. That was it. Thursday at 4 a.m., the car was in a trailer, and here we are, big, payoff. Taking home awards from here won't be easy. The World of Wheels has more than 400 vehicles on exhibit, including some of the most dramatic examples of car customizing ever seen. The Batmobile, kit from Knight Rider, and the Munster's Hot Rod are all the work of George Barris, a builder of extreme cars since the 60s. George Barris is recognized around the world as the king of customizers. Even though the Barris cars aren't entered, Allen's custom Hot Rod is in for some serious competition. Allen's vehicle was a star in Chicago area car shows more than 45 years ago. He hopes his restoration will recapture the vehicle's former glory. One car show veteran who remembers Allen's custom 54 Olds agrees to apply the finishing touch to the restoration. Well, after we've been talking with all the old timers that know the car so well, we met Pat, who is a brush master and a phenomenal pinstriper and he's gonna do some custom pinstriping on the car to really bring it back to its period correct time in 1962. Classic customs often sport decorative paint jobs. For many, flames and pinstriping add a touch of distinction, but there's nothing like a name to set a car apart from the crowd. Unbelievable what do you think, my work, I love it. It is just beautiful, thank you so much. It's been a much. real privilege to do it for you. The team's hard work and dedication has paid off. Joanne's dream is back and a contender among the top custom cars at this show. But Alan knows that they share the credit. Beyond collecting scraps of history and awards, he's come to Chicago to reunite Joanne's dream with the man who made the restoration possible. Jerry? Yes? Unbelievable. <laughs> Alan, Alan, how are you? Unbelievable. We were fortunate enough to have a photographer come along with pictures that we've seen during the whole restoration. Came here today to see Jerry Ike and let him see this car in person. Yeah. Let's go see it. All right. It's a monumental reconnection. It's the first time Jerry Ike has seen this custom in over 45 years. The color, got the side trim on it. it, 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 my, it this is my same. manager, Jim Klotz. Hi there, how you doing? Great to meet you. Ah, Great to meet you, Jerry. It, it looked like back in 63. It really <laughs> looks good, boy. Really looks good. They did a great job on it. Unbelievable. Alan's phone call to Jerry triggered a rewarding collaboration. His 60s photos proved to be the Rosetta Stone that guided the restoration. It's a special moment for Jerry. Jerry, thank you so much. It was fantastic meeting you. In 1963, the Custom Olds was a prize winner. Today, history repeats itself. Congratulations. Thank you. You're one of the top 20. Woo! <laughs> Jimmy! What's up? Top 20! 
After all the hard work, it's an emotional moment for Alan. We need to get a picture of you. Among all the customs on exhibit, Joanne's dream has been recognized as one of the 20 outstanding cars in the show. The following morning, the recognition of the team's outstanding resurrection of the dream car continues. Outstanding full radical hand-built truck. Go ahead, Alan. There you go. And then, after a surprise visit from the king of customizers, George Barris, the team receives the prize they wanted most, the Barris Elegance Award. Did we just win like, did we just win? I don't know. After a long, tough road, Alan and the team have the payoff they've been hoping for. Can't get any better than this, guys. You know, it's just Sorry. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Gotta call my wife now. Congratulations, <laughs> pal. I just, I feel like I just won the Olympics. <laughs> this is a highlight of my life. I can't believe all our hard work has paid off to have one of the highest custom car builders appreciate our car and call it the most elegant of the show is unbelievable. It is a good thing that we didn't stop. You know what they say? Perseverance. 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 Winner! <laughs> we won the Barris Award, so that'll be documented. I can leave the planet. I'm good to go. <laughs> After more than 45 years, a dream has been restored and a new page in the history of this remarkable vehicle has been written. It's a fitting end to an often painful journey. It's been a good ride. It really has. It's, and, and what happens is you seem to sense that you've done the right thing. You forget about, I guess it's like childbirth. My wife says that after the child's born, you forget about the pain. And, and it's the same thing with this. You forget about the hours, you forget about how tired you are, and you're living the dream. And it's, that's it. Doesn't get any better. Joanne's dream is back. After nearly four months of tough work and more than $100,000, the team has returned the glamorous custom to its show car status. With four awards at Chicago World of Wheels exhibition, Joanne's dream promises to be the astonishing calling card Alan's team had hoped for. And it's only just begun.